Welcome to the 7th of January, 2016. It's a Friday, and there's about two inches of snow outside, and it's pretty darn slushy. 32 degrees, a bit chilly here in the man cave, but I'm all bundled up because it's laser disc day, and the random media generator has given me dancers with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Um... One of the reasons I have the random media generator to go through this large collection of over 2,500 titles I have in my library is because there are some movies that I would just never watch. This is probably one of them. <laughs> Not a whole lot of interest here. Uh, there was a time back in the day when uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov was the golden boy. Uh, he was the defective... Uh, uh, defective... <laughs> the Russian dancer who defected uh, from the Soviet Union, and he was supposed to be such a heartthrob and, you know, everything else. I like to think that now, but Kel Ryshnikov is balding, has a pot belly, and smokes and drinks a lot. But uh, in his day, he was uh, uh, Mr. Super Dancer. So this is basically going to be a dance movie. The, most of the cast, I believe, is the New York Ballet or some other ballet company. So i um, expecting to see a lot of uh, schmaltzy romance uh, and uh, a lot of uh, really fancy uh, ballet dancing. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Premise. American Ballet Company goes to Italy to put on the ballet Giselle. So you've got a bunch of English-speaking ballet dancers in Italy. I'm guessing 1970. And basically, they're just acting out the ballet in their real lives while rehearsing to actually put the ballet on. Uh, the clothing is extremely period piece. The uh, production value is somewhat soap opera-ish, not real high. Acting is eh, because these are basically ballet dancers, they are not film actors. And what comes across here is if you're a young high school girl, about 14 years of age, and you're on Glee Club, and you're on the dance squad, this is the kind of movie that you would gather with all your friends to watch on a Saturday night for a slumber party. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, unless you're really into dancing and really into, uh, you know, just hobnobbing with your friends and lots of drama, you probably wouldn't find this a very good film. <laughs> Not to give any spoilers away here, but <laughs> just so you know, I mean, I, I think what other character could Mikhail Bryshnikov play in a, in a film such as this? He is the troubled artistic director of this performance, who's also a cad who, of course, sleeps with all the girls uh, in, in the ensemble. So he's not really a likable fellow, but I guess women might find this guy as, like, the bad boy that you want to change into, you know, something else, whatever. But Right now, I'm waiting, because I'm assuming at the end of the film, or near the end of the film, there's going to be a climax, and that climax is going to include Mikhail Gryshnikov doing some really spectacular acrobatic dancing, because that's what he's known for. So, if you haven't really seen him dance much at all, you see him kind of warm up a bit. But I'm waiting to, like, see the big payoff, which is the great big Mikhail Gryshnikov, you know, leaping, flying, spinning, acrobatic ballet. You watch. It's coming. Just finished with the obligatory, let's just watch Mikhail Baryshnikov practice dancing all by himself in a huge hall for about five minutes. I was a good athlete. But, you know, I watch this and I'm trying to get into it and think, okay, target audience. Who's going to look at this? Not men. <laughs> okay. Gay men, for sure. But regular guys, no. Because there's just no reason to identify with anything in this movie. Mikhail Baryshnikov has always kind of walked that androgynous line between masculine and feminine. So he's not really, you know, uh, a role model for most men. They're not going to get into his extreme, uh, touchy-feely, empathetic qualities. Uh... Yeah, it's just, this is basically the typical 1970s female fantasy movie.
in what may have to be the biggest product placement I have ever seen, the latter half of this film is basically the American Ballet Company performing Giselle. <laughs> the whole thing. I don't know if this is artistic or just really cheap, but like I said, the last half of this movie is just the entire ballet of Giselle. Uh, and you know, this is the classic dance film where the private lives of the dancers are acted out on stage and you get all this cross, cross empathy and emotional release uh, in the form of this, you know, a choreographed dance. Eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's like, I think what this originally was, American Ballet Theater, let's go to Italy and perform Giselle, and we can film it, but you know, that's kind of boring for most audiences to watch ballet. So let's give it a backstory about the dancers and all the little trysts and affairs that they have. And that was the first half of the movie, and then the second half is just the ballet. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. And as the credits roll, we have the uh, wondrous slow motion ballet dancing of the Kjell Gerstenkopf with all his flying loops and leg twirls. You just can't get enough of that kind of stuff. Let's see what Halliwell's Film Guys has about dancers. Hmm, dancers. On, a, on tour in Italy, a leading dancer recovers his inspiration when a young ballerina joins the company. Try to script dull romance, and moments of exciting dance. I think they're being kind. <laughs>